Before we start, let me show you roughly how we stand and how we do the surgery. So we have the screen here, we have the IGS, and I'm fortunate that I have D to assist me. So I, some surgeons like to sit. This, I can hear something. Okay, some surgeons like to sit. Some surgeons like to stand. I just want to take a few minutes to go to the ergonomics. Basically, I think it's very important that we, we learn or we train ourselves how to look after ourselves. Simply because we are going to be doing surgery for many hours and we are going to be doing surgery for many years. And the idea is for us not to have any injury because of surgery. So if we stand, we want to make sure that the table is at the same height as our waist. Not the height of the assistant or the scrub nurse, but at our waist. That's number one. Number two, because of the powered instruments, bipolars and so on, we tend to have a lot of things around our legs. One thing that you must control on your own is the divider. So if you have a divider on one side and you have a bipolar on the other leg, you might end up shifting your weight from one leg to the other leg. Now you should avoid that because if you have a long surgery, especially skull base, you will end actually have some amount of strain. And the, the older you become, the more difficult it is to recover from these sprains. The other thing is how you hold your scope. There are a lot of ways that to hold the scope the whole scope. So the idea is for you to be as comfortable as possible. There are people who hold the scope like this. Some people hold the scope like this. I hope you can see this in your screen. Oh, yes, you can. Some people who hold the scopes like this and some people who hold the scopes like this. You can hold whichever way you want, but the idea is you must be comfortable. So the way I hold it is I just hold it or adjust it as a fulcrum of my thumb and then I close it like this. So the idea is so that your wrist is mobile, you have enough movements. Because if you are going to be holding the scope for a few hours in a long, complex surgery, you're going to have pain in your wrist. The next is your shoulders. It's very important to make sure the shoulders are of the same line. It's quite easy doing surgery to accidentally lift up your shoulders and open up your armpit as well. This is a recipe for disaster. You will have pain in your arms and eventually this can actually lead to shoulder surgery. So what is important is shoulders straight. Don't lift the shoulders that you are holding the scope and do not open your armpit. Armpits close, shoulders straight and then we are all set to go. Okay, so let's start with the surgery. You can see that the patient uh, has, has got a hilt up slightly. I like my patients to have a slight extension of the head. It can be neutral if you want to. And some other basic points. Uh, can I have a suction, please? Thanks, D. So the, there are some other basic points. So whenever you hold the scope, whenever you, you want to make sure the scope is anchored right at the tip of the ala cartilage here, so that your other instruments can slide under you like this. But what is important is whenever you introduce an instrument, you withdraw your scope, put in your instrument, and follow them together. So what you do not want to do is to have an instrument here inside and then blindly insert a suction or instrument and you can't see where it's going. So I think that's a very important step. Again, just to repeat, anchor the scope right at the tip of the nose so that it's held steady. And because the nose is quite compliant, that will give you a large space and then the suction or any other instrument, always withdraw your scope, follow the instrument inside like this. 